YouTubers, fellow reefers, what up? Craig Box here. I'm just going to talk to you guys today about some of the easy corals that you can keep um, as beginner hobbyists. So I'm just going to walk through the coral beds. You know, I've been doing a lot of videos on the Fluval Evo and setups and stuff like that. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, the corals this time because we are, after all, frag box coral. So I guess I'll start with this most basic one. I'm going to talk about soft corals. So when you're new to the hobby and you want to get into corals, look for soft corals. So they don't have a skeleton like these um, hard corals over here. These are Montipora digitata, forest fire montes. They're beautiful. And then there's LPS corals, kind of like this Alveopora, or even hammer corals, which are really nice. Torch corals are beautiful. Those are LPS corals. So they have um, a skeleton on the bottom. I'll show you here. They have a hard skeleton. And then coming out of it, they have this soft, fleshy polyp or tissue. So it's kind of like between a soft coral and a hard coral. But we're getting ahead of ourselves because we're new to the hobby and we want to keep soft corals. Soft corals are the easiest by far. Um, they're quite tolerant. They do well in a variety of conditions. High light, low light, high flow, low flow. So those are zoanthids. These are um, called pallies. So you'll kind of hear zoanthids, zoos, pallies, uh, palithoa. All these words are sort of used interchangeably. For me, this is a true pally. So pally is kind of like a larger zoanthid. It's a palithoa. Um, you know, zoanthid, if I have a good example, is going to be something like this. This I would think of as a zoanthid. That's the scrambled eggs. That's a really nice um, zoa. I find myself calling them zoas a lot, or zoos, for more than one. This is a frozen apple over here. So anyways, they're like little flowers. They grow incredibly fast. They do well in dirty water, clean water, high light, low light, wherever you stick them. They really just grow well, which is kind of like this coral here, which is called green star polyps, also known as GSP. So this coral grows incredibly fast. I mean, you can almost watch it grow daily and it's very hardy and it's very easy to see when it's happy because when it's not happy or when it's sleeping, it's gonna do this. You see how it retracts inside? So we often recommend this as one of the first corals because you'll know within a day or not if your tank is ready or if your water is ready um, for the most basic of corals, which is this GSP coral. And if you're gonna add this one, um, you wanna keep in mind because it grows so fast, it is somewhat invasive. So if you're gonna stick it in your tank, um, for example, here, you wouldn't wanna stick it on the bottom, let's say, of like this rock right here, because it's gonna take that entire rock on the base, and you're gonna have a lot of trouble with it because it grows very quickly. So what we like to do is almost isolate it if you have like a little island rock, or a rock that's really easy to take out and manage, because once this thing starts to grow, there's really no stopping it. So that's one soft coral you may wanna put a little more thought into before um, adding it to the tank. So that's one. This one beside it's also quite nice and easy. This is called a mushroom coral. Mushrooms have a couple different types um, in that family. So this is called a rhodactis. Uh, they are quite easy. They don't grow really fast like other sorts of mushrooms. Let me see if I have discosoma or disco mushrooms. I have a small blue one here that hasn't yet attached to any sort of substrate. So we have it just chilling in this basket waiting for it to attach. There's a disco as well, discosoma. So they're soft, or yeah, they are, sorry, they're all soft corals, but they have sort of like a smooth appearance to them, and that's how you can tell them apart from some of the other mushrooms like uh, Recordia yumas, like this beautiful one right here. These are, in my experience, a little bit um, slower growing than, than other mushrooms. Here's another really nice mushroom. It's a bullseye rhodactis. So mushroom corals, um, low light and Oh, let me show you Tia's tank, hold on. She's got a lot of mushrooms in it. They're low light corals, and they're really easy to keep. And you can bunch them together, kind of like what Tia's done here. So she's got, that's a nice discosoma, and another one, and another one, and another one. And you see how they're all touching, and they're all quite happy in low light, low flow. And this is a hairy mushroom here. So mushroom's a good example of corals that are easy to keep, and there's some more zoanthids or palithoas. Let me see what else we've got in the tank here. A Kenya tree, here's another really easy one. So it's got a cool kind of purpley blue hue to it, really easy to keep. And that is a soft coral and it's a leather coral. So they grow really fast. Um, they're easy to frag. So if they start to get out of control, you can literally take a pair of scissors and chop, chop, and just chop branches off of it and glue them and mount them to frag plugs. Really, really easy coral to keep. That's Kenya tree. Similar to, I guess not similar, but it's in the leather family as well. These are called toadstools. So these are small, Tyree toadstool frags. They got this nice vibrant green to them. Those are really easy to keep too, good for beginners. 
had a larger one. I guess somebody bought it. I want to show you a really cool larger one, but I'll show you these other soft corals that are really easy and fast growing and great for sort of new tanks. They're called clove polyps. And they're really nice because they kind of look like um, flowers. And they can also grow really quick in the right conditions. I find they like uh, quite low flow and lower light, so they do good at the bottom of the tank. And they grow very fast in our system, but different than GSP because I find they're not invasive. I'll show you a bigger example here. And what that means is, you know, even if they grow quick, they have such a light footing on the rock. They don't grab and hold the way the green star polyp says. You could literally take these and just peel them right off the rock. So as they start to grow in your tank, they're not really something you need to worry about. And they're not going to go and drop babies like this other popular coral here. Um, pulsing Xenia. Let's see. See that it's pulsing in the... I hope you can see it. It's quite blue, these lights. But Pulsing Xenia, incredibly easy coral to keep. Fast growing, but sort of similar in one regard to GSP, where it can kind of get out of control. And they can drop seedlings or babies and they'll pop up around the tank which is pretty cool so you just have to put a little bit more planning I would say into into this one and GSP before adding them to your tank so that's a good rundown I think of easy corals at least that we have here that I can show you um, other easy corals to keep in the um, LPS family would be like Blastos if you want to try something easy that's not necessarily a, a soft coral they're kind of like uh, acans here's really nice Blastos low light or lower light low to medium flow Here's a nice Acan over here. Acan, Acan Lord, I believe. Yeah, that's Acan Lord. Uh, even hammer corals. You know, they are, if your tank is cycled and, you know, maybe you're a couple months in and you've tried some soft corals and they seem to be growing and doing well, you could try something like this. Hammer coral, even trumpet coral. Or candy cane. I find those two names get tossed around a lot. There's some trumpet. Um, hammers are one of my favorite. Here's a really nice purple and green one. And these are branching hammer, which I find are a little bit easier than the wall hammer. And as they start to grow, if you need to one day, if you're lucky enough to grow them to that size, you can frag them because the, the heads branch off. A personal favorite of mine, the torch coral, Euphilia glabarensis, I think is the Latin name. Don't quote me on that, but they're really nice. They add so much movement to the tank. They look really alive, almost like um, an anemone. An and a lot of times clowns and clownfish, will they, they'll, they'll actually host it because they don't know the difference. So it's kind of a nice substitute for an anemone, which I'm not crazy about. But those are really nice. There's some really nice Utter Chaos. Those are some Utter Chaos Palithoas. Yeah, so if you're new to the hobby and you're trying to figure out what to put in your tank and you need some guidance, you can hit us up. You can call us. I'll put our number at the end of the video. Email. You know, we love talking about corals. Um, any questions at all. This was just to try and help guide you guys if you're new to this hobby. Um, with what corals might be appropriate for sort of a, a new saltwater tank. But any questions at all, hit us up, fragbox.ca. Email is going to be in the video. Comments below. Thanks for watching again, guys. Give me video ideas. Give me uh, stuff to talk about. I like doing this. Hey, Diggs, are we done? Is that a wrap? This guy's been done for a while. Good night, puppy.